If I was to be asked the one primary physical reason that some people get better really, really quickly with PRI programs and some people take a lot longer, it would be from a physical standpoint, anterior hip, so the front of the left hip, instability or pathology. So when people have stretched out anterior front hip capsules on the left side, that is what delays things or keeps things from working as quickly as you would like to. People who don't have left hip pathology, and I would say from the, from the amount of people that come in to see me in person, I would say maybe 10% don't have anterior front hip pathology, maybe 15 at the most, that's not a lot. Which means those types of people usually aren't in pain. Yes, they are in a left AIC pattern, but because the front of their left hip is still intact, they're probably not really gonna be in pain or they might just have some minor aches and pains. I haven't had anyone come in and be in a ton of pain who, had, who didn't have anterior hip pathology. So anterior hip pathology, you'll see this diagram right here. It's the front of the hip capsule. Those ligaments get, tend to get stretched out or lengthened or weakened because of the position of the pelvis. Here I go again. The position of the pelvis is to the right, the left side comes forward, and then the left leg has to turn out externally rotate to stay straight. And when it does that, it starts over time, it starts to stretch out the front of that left hip capsule. And then it creates instability all through the left hip. Now, how do you know if somebody has it? Well, you're gonna see it in this video. You're gonna see, you're gonna see three tests. One, the first is the adduction drop test. So I lay him on his side and I check to see if his left leg can adduct. It cannot, which means his pelvis is forward on that left side. You're then gonna see a straight leg raise. His straight leg raise goes up probably higher than it should, which means his left hamstring is stretched out a little bit, but that wasn't, the more, that wasn't really the more concerning test. The next test, which is called, sometimes called the Thomas test, I'm testing his hip extension of the, left, of the left side. If a pelvis is forward on the left side in this left AIC pattern, and the left leg cannot adduct, the left hip should not have full extension. It should not go all the way down to the table, but his does. In that case, it means that the front of his left hip capsule, the left lig hip ligaments, that he has that pathology going on. And that's how you know things are gonna be a little bit more difficult in his process. Could you do me a favor? If you like this video, could you like it or subscribe or comment or share? I'd appreciate it, thanks. So here you see, here is the left adduction drop test, and he cannot adduct his left leg. It will not go down. Now I'm going to turn him over. He's going to do a straight leg raise, or I'm going to test him in a straight leg raise, and his left leg goes up 70, 75, 80, depending on the angle. That's probably a little bit too much, but now he's doing the left hip extension, and here, when I bring his left leg down into extension, it goes all the way down. It should stop short. Now, because it didn't stop short, I know the front of his hip is pathologic, and that's where things get a lot more difficult. When left hips are pathologic, that means you're going to have to work a lot harder on the left hip musculature, the left hamstring, the left adductor, and the left anterior glute medius, and the left abdominals. The problem is, when you have anterior hip laxity or anterior hip pathology on that left side, because you've become unstable on that left side, that instability will have caused you, highly like almost always, to tighten up in other areas of your body to protect that area because you're unstable. So if you're unstable in one place in the body, you're gonna have to tighten up elsewhere in order to stabilize your body. That's why people who don't have anterior hip pathology on the left side, they get better so much faster because they inhibit so quickly. And then it's just a matter of using a couple muscles that they have no trouble feeling. People who have left hip pathology often struggle really bad with feeling the proper muscles or they can't stop feeling the wrong muscles. It's an, it, it can be a nightmare, especially online. When I'm working in person with somebody, I have all these tests. I have 30 tests I could do, something like that, to figure out where the restriction is coming from, to see, how, so, to see where someone is tightening up to protect that left side. Online, you don't really have that, that luxury. You have to go through the most likely scenarios. But then that also comes to the point of doing random PRI techniques that you see on YouTube or, or Instagram. 
you'll have no clue why your left glute medius is not being felt and why you're just cramping in your left TFL or why you can't stop feeling your right adductor. You don't know. And here's a list that I put together of reasons that you may not feel your left adductor, your left glute medius, your left hamstring, or you may just feel the wrong muscles, period. So here is a list. And I probably didn't even think of, any, of enough of them, but there's a lot already. So first, is the pelvis, the rib cage, and the neck neutral? Can you pass all your range of motion tests? If not, then you're probably not gonna feel your left glute medius or your left adductor probably. I'm just gonna to refer to them as left hip muscle, uh, the left hip muscles. I'm just gonna blank a term, left hip muscles. You're not gonna feel them all properly. Okay, so if you're, not if you're not neutral in your pelvis, your rib cage, and your neck, you probably will not feel those muscles properly. Uh, if you have other pathology in your right lower back, in your shoulders, or maybe in your upper neck, in the cervical spine, in the uh, upper cervical instability, you probably will not feel that left side appropriately. Your shoes, if you're wearing minimalist shoes, uh, you may not feel those left hip muscles properly. If you're having orthotics that, you that are actually doing more harm than good, well, you're not gonna feel things properly. Uh, if you do not yet know how to use your left heel, your right arch, and your right big toe as sensory references, as sensory inputs, if you don't know how to integrate that input, you probably won't feel your left hip muscles appropriately. Uh, repeated ankle sprains, your ankles have, have tightened up really, really badly. Probably you're, you're too tight. You can't, you can't relax. Probably not going to feel things properly. Bunions. Bunions may keep your gait altered and that could you could struggle to, uh, to really feel those left muscles. Overactive quads, a tight right adductor. All of these are very common in this left AIC, right BC pattern or PEC pattern. If you have a left TFL, which is a hip flexor on the left side, if you keep cramping whenever you try to do left side activity and you keep cramping in the front of your left hip, you know that's the left TFL, that's the wrong muscle. I felt the left TFL probably for like the first, I don't think I felt my left glute medius for at least four or five years. All I felt was the TFL and I was like, I always kept thinking, I don't think this is right. Couldn't understand what was going on, but of course it was coming from my cranium, my, my vision and my teeth and my jaw. Uh, if you have right, so, right hip flexor overactivity, your right psoas is being overused to hold you over on your right side and to stabilize your right hip and to stabilize your right leg, uh, that could prevent you from shifting far enough to the left so that you can't actually use your left hip musculature. Calves, your calves could be hyperactive. They could be preventing you from hip shifting. Your right abdominal wall, your right intercostals. When you're over on that right side and you're too tight through the right side, you can't rotate to the left. You can't side bend to the left because everything on the right side is too tight. All those things will prevent you from using your left hip muscles properly. Uh, your left posterior hip capsule, so the, the back of your left hip, uh, your right inferior glute max, so the lower right butt area and right inner thigh could be holding your pelvis back so that when you try to shift to the left, it doesn't work properly. Uh, your left posterior rib cage, so the back of your left lower and left mid back could be too tight. Uh, your right upper chest, you might not be able to get air into your right upper chest. Your right subclavius, this tiny muscle underneath this right collarbone, could be holding everything over to the right. Your right SCM, this big right neck muscle, and an internally rotated right temporal bone. If these are overactive, or your right scalenes and right upper trap, they may prevent you from actually, again, prevent you from shifting to the left, and thus, if you can't shift to the left appropriately, you can't get that pelvis and leg in the right position to use all your left leg hip musculature appropriately. Uh, left pterygoid, your left jaw musculature could be very, very weak. Uh, left peripheral vision, your brain may have stopped using your left peripheral vision, meaning you just have to start paying attention to the left side of your world more while over on your left leg. Your teeth, your occlusion, the way your teeth are touching, cross bites, open bites in the front or the back. A jaw that's shifted in one direction or the other is indicating a system that's not balanced. And when you're unbalanced up top, it's very difficult to feel your left uh, hip musculature, in particular the left glute med, appropriately. Uh, and then it could be a wrong prescription. So watch, some people, or a wrong prescription, so your vision, your a wrong prescription, or some people don't wear their glasses. And just let me show you the difference between someone wearing their glasses and not wearing their glasses. In the first picture, on the left, the gentleman is not wearing his glasses, and you'll see his back is staying too tight. He cannot touch 
He cannot reach, he's standing on his left leg. He cannot reach forward and touch his right foot with his left hand. His back is too tight. If his back is too tight, his, his spine can't flex enough. And if his spine can't flex enough, he can't shift into his left hip. So he'll never be able to activate his left hip muscles appropriately. But then when he puts glasses on, you can see that his back can round so he can get thoracic flexion. And now he has no problem touching his toes. So for him, his back and pelvis couldn't stay neutral because he wasn't wearing his glasses. But uh, after he put his glasses on, he really had no problems feeling any of the muscles. So that's just, that's a partial list. It's a pretty good list, it's a, but still probably partial. There's probably still more to it of why anterior hip pathology is so problematic. It's because some of these areas have probably tightened up on other people. On, some of these areas have probably tightened up on you to protect yourself when you go over to that side. Because if you go over that left side and it's so unstable, you run the risk of falling. So other areas are gonna tighten up. Now, a lot of people have restrictions in more than one place, two, three, four, five places. And so if someone said, if you give someone uh, anterior, if you just look on YouTube or Instagram and find, hey, this technique is for left anterior glute medius. And you know, someone who does PRI said, do this, but it doesn't work for you. Well, now you know there's a lot of reasons why. The problem is online, you're never gonna figure out why it's happening. It's even sometimes difficult in person, much less online. So just realize if you're trying to work on your left anterior glute medius or you're not feeling your left hamstring properly, you feel cramping, or if you're not feeling your left adductor or you're feeling your right adductor too much or your right ab wall or your neck or your back, this is just as long as you're doing the technique properly, which you may not be, one of these things is probably covering up for anterior, left anterior hip pathology.